Welcome back to Make Stuff Nation. I recently finished painting the interior of the boat, and now it's time to move on to installing the plywood decks. Before I do that, I need to install the hatches on the number two and number five frame bulkheads. To install these, I put some waterproof sealant on the flanges of these hatches, and then installed them using silicon bronze screws. With the hatches installed, I can move on to making the pattern for the aft deck. I roll out the cardboard and then staple it in place and cut it to size. I trim it flush with the sides and the transom of the boat. The aft deck is wider than my roll of cardboard, so I need to use a second sheet to make the full size pattern. I set it roughly in place and then I only need a few inches of overlap on this cardboard, so I trim off the excess. Once it's stapled down and completely smooth, I trim the rest of it flush, and then I tape it to the other part of the pattern. I'm using aluminum tape because I find it doesn't stretch, and it helps hold the pattern securely together. With the aft deck pattern complete, I move on to the, de the quarter decks or seats. Same process here, I roll out the cardboard and trim it flush with the sides. On the seats, I then use another piece with a factory straight edge on the side and put it in place at the front. Then I trim it flush and tape it to the other part of the pattern. I then mark out where the chain plates are gonna extend through the seats. With the seats or quarter decks done, I move on to the foredeck. I run my factory edge of the cardboard along the center line of the boat because there's going to be two panels that make up the foredeck. And I want the factory edge to be the seam. Again, I smooth it out, staple it in place, and then trim it flush with the sides. I repeat the process for the other side of the foredeck. I line up the factory edge seam down the center line of the boat as tight as I can without overlap. With the patterns complete, I can take them outside and lay them on my quarter inch plywood decking stock. Again, this is quarter inch Marenti Mahogany Marine Plywood. And I just situate the patterns to try to minimize waste. But I also don't want to have to piece the different pieces together from off cuts. I have the plywood lifted up off the ground with some 2x4 stock and a waste sheet of plywood. That way I can cut through without damaging the blade on my saw but it still gives me a nice flat work surface. I can then place the five deck pieces back on the boat. Now I cut these wider than the patterns because the edges of these are gonna to need to be beveled where they meet the sides. I then start to install the deck panels by marking and attaching the screws that I'll use to clamp the deck down onto the deck work when I'm epoxying it in place. I use a scrubbing tool to mark where the edge of the deck is going to be after it's beveled. And then I measure inboard from that to the center line of the frames where the screws are going to be. Then I use the same tool to align my drill bit parallel with the sides of the boat to drill the holes for the screws. Once I have all the screws attached, then I can remove them and take the panel off to get it ready to epoxy in place. On the foredeck along the center line, there's some permanent silicon bronze screws. So I also set those in place. To attach the decks to the framework, I mixed up a bunch of epoxy with a fumed silica thickener. I then put it in a disposable pastry bag and used that to pipe it out onto the decking 
or onto the deck cork. I found this worked really well and gave me a lot of control on how much epoxy I was putting onto the deck work frames. Then I place the deck panels in place and screw them down. As I screw down the deck panels, I'm looking for squeeze out around all the edges. And I try to remove as much of the squeeze out as possible to make cleanup afterwards easier. I also look for any gaps between the deck panel and the sides. And if I need to, I'll add extra screws and washers to get the appropriate clamping force. Once the epoxy is cured, I go ahead and remove all the screws and washers. And then I can take off the cardboard patterns. With the cardboard patterns removed, I check and make sure I haven't missed any staples and then brush off all the deck panels. The next step is going to be trimming those deck panels down even with the sides of the boat. I do this just like I did the bottom and side panels. I also trim the stem cap off flush with the top of the foredeck. I trim the deck panels even with the sides of the boat using a hand plane and then finish sanding them flush with a sanding block and sandpaper. This is the same process I used trimming the bottom panels flush with the side panels. In spots I also use a chisel where the hand plane isn't being very effective. To Here you can see the aft deck panel is trimmed flush the same way as the fore deck panels, using a hand plane first followed by the sanding block. The deck panels are also trimmed flush with the deck frames at the edges of the cockpit. Once I get the fore and aft deck panels trimmed flush, I can move on to getting the seats ready to epoxy in place. First I have to drill out the hole for the chain plates in the seat panels. I drill a hole at either end of the slot and then use a coping saw to cut out the waste material in between the two holes. I also trace out the chain plate cover. After that I use a file to clean up the hole. With that done, I check the fit of the hole in the seat panel over the chain plate and then trim the end of the seat panel down with a hand plane so that it fits flush against the deck beam of the fore deck and aft decks. With that complete, then I move on to screwing the seat panels down using the same method I used on the fore and aft decks. There's a lot of curvature in these panels compared to the fore and aft decks, so I used more screws and I actually had to use some clamps to help hold the panels in place while I was putting in the screws. Once I had all the screws set and ready to go, I removed both seat panels 
and then piped out epoxy onto the deck framing work. On the port side, I mixed up the epoxy a little too thick and it was difficult to pipe. But the second batch that I used on the starboard side seat panel worked out really well. I didn't add quite as much thickener. This won't have any effect on the end strength. It just made it a little more difficult to work with. Once I had the quarter deck panels or seats epoxied in place and screwed down, I let everything cure for 24 hours before removing the clamps and then screws. You can see here I'm removing some of the squeeze out as we move along and also adding a few extra clamping screws to make sure it's held in place. After removing the screws and cardboard, uh, now I can trim the quarter decks or seats down to their final dimensions. I used a router with a roundover bit to remove most of the waste on the inside of the cockpit. Due to the curvature of the seats, it didn't work perfectly but it saved me a lot of work. I also used a flush trim saw to remove the corner pieces where the router couldn't get to. I then used a hand plane to do the final trimming to make sure that the edges of the seat panels were flush with the rails on the seats. A chisel made quick work of the corners. Finally, I sanded everything so I had a nice round edge on it for comfort and to make sure you wouldn't hurt yourself if you fell onto it. Obviously, the paint on the rails and the deck beams around these panels will need to be touched up later, but it was important to sand it down to a fine finish. With all the deck panels trimmed to their final dimensions, that concludes the major structural work of the boat. I'll still need to add rub rails to the sides and a splash guard or boards up on the foredeck, but for the most part it's complete. It's just finishing work and rigging from here. This is where I'm going to wrap up today's video. In the next video, we'll flip the boat over and work on finishing the exterior, the bottom and sides before we then flip it back upright and add the rub rails and finish the decks. I've also got a video in the works on constructing the rudder, which will be posted soon. I hope you found this video entertaining and useful. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching Make Stuff Nation, and we'll see you next time.